So hi, uh, this is Craig Tomler from Startup Stories, and I'm here today with uh, Peter Van Zon, uh, who's a game developer. Um, your company name is? Van Zon Games, very original. It's my last name with games on the end of it. <laughs> Great. Um, and uh, we'll be talking to him about his journey uh, as a founder. Um, so, so Peter, uh, tell me about how you decided to get into uh, game design. Uh, it's, that's a long story, actually. Um, I guess for me, Starting a business has been something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, as a young fella, I think as early as 21, it was something that I wanted to do. But trying to find that niche where I wanted to put my effort in starting a business took until probably about two, three years ago, or about three years ago, when I discovered that uh, game design is what I wanted to do. And that really came about, as a young fella, I had a a hyperactive imagination, I guess, so drawing all the time, wasn't paying attention to teachers, just creating my own little worlds, writing my own little mini stories. Um, and then I went to go to graf do graphic design at university and I was rejected. My portfolio was too, uh, wasn't diverse enough and they said you'd be great for animation, but as far as graphic design goes, um, we don't think you, you have that diverse kind of background. So I stopped drawing, and I didn't draw again for until 15 years later. Yeah, it must have been a pretty big blow to be told that. Uh, it was for a young fella, but um, I guess looking back at it, it was true, and they, they didn't do anything wrong. They, they wanted the right people for that course. And, but animation wasn't starting till the next year. That was something new for them. Uh, and I, so I then went and joined the army, <laughs> as you do. I did a few other things, um, then joined the army, and... I guess I was watching a YouTube clip of some guy drawing a spaceship. I guess I always had that connection with uh, just watching other people and, and how they went about it. And I mean, I wouldn't mind learning how, how to do some perspective drawing. And I thought I had crushed the left side of my brain just through neglect. And it just came out. And I started drawing and I drew and I drew and I drew. And uh, that kind of developed into uh, game design, strangely enough. I was always playing, I've always enjoyed computer games and, um, and how they, I guess, stimulate the left hand side of my brain. And, and I'm like, this is what I want to do. And it's just been smooth sailing from there. It was a fairly easy transition. Yeah, so, so there, there's something you particularly talk about in your blog about you know, when you finally decide, decided to go and start your own game design company. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share that? Um, with people? In the, where I was in the kitchen with my... <laughs> yeah, so some, one of my work colleagues said that him and a few mates were doing a, a social media, a social app. And I thought that was awesome. They had no background in it. Um, and that really set the... Uh, the thought was, if they can do it, so can I. Uh, it was a moment of inspiration, I guess. And over a few weeks, I was mulling around with my brain and I was standing in the kitchen and I was eating, a, I think it was a cheese sandwich or something. And I've just gone to my wife and go, darling, I, I want to make a computer game. <laughs> and my wife, without no, there was no background to this. That was the first her, my, her wife heard it was me standing in the kitchen. She said, what the fuck are you talking about? And I said, darling, don't swear. Um, and there was probably about a week there of me explaining where the thought process had come from and the background and the first game concept that I had was called Starbase Awesome. I think I told you about that um, last week. And I realised when I went to then scope that project, um, it was too ambitious. So I needed to come up with another one, which was, ended up being Trapfall Adventures, which is our first game released on the App Store. But that all just, it all kind of came together in a crazy moment in the kitchen where I want to make a game. And then from there it went, well, I need to officialise this. So I went about getting an ABN and, and starting a business and, and alongside with obviously making the game. And, and that's how it started. Yeah, and you've had a lot of support from your wife on the process too. Yeah, massively. Uh, and it probably wouldn't have happened. And everyone needs a partner in crime and your wife's probably the best partner in crime that you can have. So getting her support... We wouldn't have gotten to where we are now without her support, so she's well and truly been there for the ride. The crazy journey of starting your own business. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so other than you know, that challenge of, of finding out first you had a project that was uh, too big for what you were trying to start with, what yep. other challenges that, that we sort of faced in that journey? Um, so my, my background and my talent lies in creativity. So yes. art, coming up with ideas, 
Uh, and I guess with my, my background in the military, um, being able to, I'll say project manage, um, for want of a better term. And so I've outsourced the actual coding. I can't code. Uh, I cannot even get my name to pop up on a screen. It <laughs> just goes against what the way my brain works. No hello world. Yeah, no, can't even get that. So, um, and I tried and I very quickly realised I should stop putting effort into so that was the first challenge. I'm gonna to have to learn to code. And I quickly realized that it was gonna, one, be too painful, take me too long, and I was never gonna be good at it. Mm -hmm. So I then went through other methods of how can I make this idea a reality, I guess. Um, and so we, we found a team in India called Logic Simplified. Um, and they've been great. They've been with me for, we've been together for two years now, working on this project. And, the first problem was communication. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, dealing with um, another culture who may think take things literally, may not take things literally, and just working through the way to communicate ideas through visualization, uh, design briefs, all those kind of mechanisms. They they were really the the first hurdle, and I learned that pretty quickly within the first two months. And then once that happened, uh, I guess that first challenge. Uh, came together. Uh, sorry, was was no longer a challenge. The next part was bringing the, the disparate parts of game design together. And, and I guess every business has these issues. There's pieces of the puzzle that you need to somehow put together to, to make that business work. And uh, it, was just, it wasn't just coding and design, audio, uh, finance, all those things to make that project work, to end up with a project uh, product at the end, which I guess yes. is Trapful Adventures, that you know you can sell to the the public. Yeah, and, and your game's out on the um, App Store, it's yeah. a, what, out, out on iPhones and Androids, isn't it? Not Androids, no, we're moving it into yeah. Androids, it's just iOS, um, mm -hmm. so that was released about seven weeks ago now. Yeah, yeah well, that must be a fantastic feeling to actually it be was. able to go onto the, the store and say, you know, that's something I created. Yeah. And you're right, and I think for, for people who start their own businesses, I don't think it's all about chasing the money. I don't think people start businesses because it's the money, otherwise, I'm sure people do, but I think the impetus behind starting, but definitely for me, was wanting to create, wanting to build something that I could say, hey, I did this, and being the captain of your own ship and, and steering in the direction where you want to go, and there's, there's obviously consequences to that. Uh, and that's exhilarating. Um, and so with game design, and it's such a passionate community, spending, working full time, and then putting hundreds of my own hours after work, uh, late into the night, just, you know, just writing briefs, um, and doing game testing, and, and all those kind of things. You put a lot of emotional effort into it. You You put a lot of your own sweat, blood and tears into it and the, the emotional investment. And then after two years of trying to get to where you need to go, you've got a plan and you just have to see it through. And it, it's hard when you're stuck in the middle of it to go stand back and see this is where we're going because yes. you're in the middle of it. When that moment finally happened and I got the email from Apple saying, hey, it's on, it's on, it's on the store, um, check it out. I, I started crying. It's yeah. probably the first time I've cried uh, geez, it's like I can't remember, and it was just such a huge release of emotion, and, and that for me was kind of valid validation that I was doing something that I want to do. Mm. If you're going to have such a physical reaction to something as simple as how your game is on the on the app store, then that really is confirmation that you're doing something that you're passionate about. Yes, and I, and I think that's critical when starting your own business that you do something that you're passionate about. And here I am. So, so what things have you learnt along the way? Like you've already talked about some of them, but there's some other things you've you've uh, learnt through the experience. Did you tell somebody else who was thinking about doing this? Um, in game design, in particular, or, or well, small business, business in business itself? Yes, I think you really need to think about what you're good at. <laughs> I'm not good at coding, so there's no point in me investing a lot of time and effort. And I guess it's, I'll use, say it another way, play to your strengths. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do something, whether it's open a 
fast food store, whether it's I'm going to start my own little delicatessen or game design or whatever it is, you need to be passionate about it and work to your strengths. I guess another thing that I learned, and it's, it's a weakness of mine, um, and my wife is very good at it, is the written communication style as far as marketing goes. Mm-hmm. So yes, I can write, I can uh, convey what I'm thinking in a game design document, but as far as uh, press releases and and blogs and, and that kind of editing, I'm not good at. And then that's critical because that is what goes out into the public space. Yeah. Um, and that is that window between you and the, and the public space. So you need someone who's good at that, and, and I'm not. Um, and my wife is. She's got a degree in journalism and business management. Um, and I have a degree in business management, but that journalism degree uh, and the way her brain works, that's her strength. So that's just another example of if you're not good at something, don't. Yes, it, it might be cheaper to do it yourself, but you're never going to be as good as someone who excels in that area. Yeah. So it ends up not being cheaper, really. In yeah, it, yeah, yeah, definitely. And it takes your time away from the things that you're actually good at and where you can actually add all the value. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So you really need to be honest with yourself uh, and early before you start it. And I, and I think I write in another blog about ideas and, and idea smithing and... And that's for what I do, critical. You know, where do ideas come from? How do you then turn that idea in, into a concept? But at the same goes for any other business, in, in my opinion, uh, from what I've experienced. You really need to think long and hard, and you call it a business plan, call it whatever you want. You need to think long and hard about what you want to do, what, are, what value you're going to bring to the table to the public, why are they going to purchase or invest or whatever your business concept is. And then you need to identify what you're good at. And if you need to bring someone on, bring the partnership or whether it's family, whether it's friends, whatever, make sure that they've got the strengths to be able to to target that. And and that can all be done early on. And if you can do that early on before you start investing money, then you can iron out a lot of those bugs then and there. So they don't become issues later on. We go, I have no idea what I'm I'm doing here. I I can't get this right. And now you have to then spend a lot more money or when you could have yeah. avoided it um, to begin with. Yeah, you're, you're actually quite fortunate that your wife had those skills because yeah. they, they, they didn't fill all the holes you had in your business, but you had other routes to fill things like the coding hole. But yeah. It was something that you needed that otherwise you'd have to look outside for. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And, uh, and that was just fortunate circumstances mm. and, and obviously we complement each other well in, in that regard. So... Yeah, I guess that that was another lesson. And well, good, good partner selection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very lucky. So, yeah, I guess that's that's probably my number one tip for at the very beginning. Okay. And given what you've gone through mm-hmm. um, over a couple of years, getting it to the point where you've yeah. gotten to, what would you have done differently if you did it again? <sighs> Nothing, and, and I say that because the way I learn is I learn by doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not an academic. I know, I know I really struggle to learn in the classroom environment. Um, the best, and not saying that I, I can't and I don't and I haven't, um, mm. you know, I've obviously got a business, a bachelor in business management, but the best way I learn is by doing. So for me to make that jump, and don't forget, you know, that was the first inklings of me wanting to start my own business was 15 years ago. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, about 15 years ago now, yeah. Um, so when I finally identified what I wanted to do, it was just very natural for me to jump in and get my hands dirty and then learn as I go. Because the lessons that you learn along the way, if you can iron out a lot of those bugs to begin with by actually sitting down and thinking about it, but it's never going to be perfect. So the lessons that I learned on the way were invaluable because now I know what not to do next time because I actually learned by doing instead of reading in, in a classroom and I can apply that lesson. Um, and, and I'll use an example uh, with the company that I used. The communication piece at the beginning was fine, but in, I just took for granted that they would understand what I meant and the, the cultural nuances would come through, and they didn't. And that, that cost me, it didn't cost me heaps, but it, it cost me about one and a half, two thousand dollars for they executed what I said, but they just understood it in a different way. Yes. Um, and so I, I couldn't get angry at them because it was my fault. Yeah. 
And so that part that I, I then learned uh, that communication is important and you can't just take it for granted. You really need to invest. And, it, and it's not just community, it's relationship building. Yes. Uh, building that trust. Mm-hmm. And that's something I, I had to learn through experience and, and I'm grateful for that lesson. So I, I wouldn't change anything because if I did, I wouldn't learn the lessons. So that it was a good investment. Now. Yeah, really? yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, because you, you, yeah, I've had I've had similar experiences working with uh, overseas teams where yeah. it just they might be able to speak English and mm-hmm. understand English, but the whole cultural basis is is different, and so they draw different conclusions from the same sort of information and and vice versa. Yeah, you you learn your cultural biases that way too. You yeah. learn you learn where people actually think differently. And and that's and that's in, in an interconnect, interconnected world. Having that skill set to be able to communicate with different cultures um, in the way that they, uh, I guess, assimilate information is, is critical. If if you're going to be doing stuff like outsourcing anything of your business to a to an overseas firm. Yeah, I know a lot of people have tried outsourcing and have given up because they felt it wasn't working. And I think quite often it's a communications issue. Massively, yeah. I'd, I'd argue probably ninety nine percent of the time it is. Yeah. So, now you've got the first game out there, yep. what's next? Ah, yeah, so, so, so many ideas. I've got Starbase Awesome, obviously, is, is still yes, there. in the back of the mind. Yeah, the, there's uh, Lumberdash, there's Ungabunga Caveman Village, there's um, Viking Academy, where you have a whole, you get little Vikings come in and you've got to train them up. And, and look, and this is the exciting thing about game design. Um, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Uh, your imagination's the limit, really. And if you can't imagine it, then you can't make it. So I guess having a hyperactive imagination really helps. But you really then, once you have all these ideas, you really need to, to ground them into a concept that it can be executed by a design team. And uh, as in, a, they're going to do the graphics and the audio team and the development team so they can actually get it to where your vision is and, and I definitely see that as my role but I guess my ultimate goal is and this is very ambitious I guess and it's going to be a bit bold but I want to make a real time strategy mm-hmm. um, it's going to cost a lot of money but that's that's the insight Th- start small think big and I, I really want to give Blizzard a run for their money in the real time strategy genre this it's been a genre that's kind of disappeared, uh, not disappeared, but hasn't really, it was well and truly done back in the, the 90s and, and early 1000s, and it's kind of disappeared in, in other genres, but there's so much to give and so much more to explore in, into that genre, and that's where I really want to focus my efforts in, and, and probably in about another two two or so games, yep. and that's where more passion. I guess the first game I ever played was June 2. Ah, yes, I remember June, yes. <laughs> Battle for Iraq. So yes. there's, it was that and Doom. Um, they were my first games on my 386 uh, on, on a computer. Um, so th- there is a, I guess I have a soft spot for r- real-time strategies and I've got some crazy ideas that I, I think will be, will turn out to be a nice game with some good game, different gameplay Excellent. mechanisms. So we'll see what happens. Great. Oh, well, thank you very much for joining me today. No worries. And wish you all the best in the future. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys.